Namaste yogis and lovers of wellness and welcome back to the Yogi Blair YouTube channel. Today we're going to do something fun, something different. I've seen everybody in every profession here on YouTube reacting to TikToks in their field. So I thought, why not react to some yoga fails? And I just want to throw out a quick disclaimer here that a lot of these are just yoga videos that I am reacting to. A lot of them were captioned with the hashtag themselves as yoga fail. I'm not saying that they're failing. Um, a lot of these were meant to be funny. So I'm just going to take a look and see if maybe there's something that I can suggest posture wise that maybe they could think about next time before trying the same thing. Um, but with that being said, if you're new to my channel, my name is Vanessa Blair Ferris. I'm a certified registered yoga instructor, and it's just my passion to share yoga as well as wellness with anybody that needs it, but especially those healing from trauma. And I just wanted today's video to be something fun, something laid back, something funny. So with all of that being said, make sure that if you have any requests or if you want to send me a TikTok of yourself, you can email it below. My email is always linked below for questions, requests, comments, yada, yada, yada. You can follow me at TikTok at yogi.blair. You can follow me on Instagram at yogi.blair. And you can find me on Facebook as Vanessa Blair Ferris. And now let's get into today's video. Okay, so let's get started. My phone is about to die, so we gotta move quick, quick. So I went ahead and downloaded these videos to my Chromebook so that I could watch them while recording. And we're gonna go ahead and just check some things out here. This first one is from How to Practice Yoga, which is actually a great account to follow on TikTok if you are looking for some yoga videos. Um, this one is, I think, How to Practice a Handstand. Let's see. I'm going to leave the volume off for copyright reasons. I'm going to pause it right there where it says to measure the distance of your legs from the wall, sitting down in Dandasana or staff pose. And then you take do the measurement from your hips and that's where you plant your hands to put your feet up on the wall. Um, for me, that seems like a lot of extra work and a lot of times, depending on the length of your arms versus the ratio of your legs, you might need to change it. So I feel like it's easier just to plant your hands and walk your feet out and kind of find that sweet spot for yourself. The idea, which I think she says here, is to create that L shape, getting the hips over the shoulders, which is true, but if you have super long legs, it might be a little bit different. So I think it's just kind of important to have a friend to spot you at all times if you're new to this. And also just kind of maybe even use a camera to see where your hips are in ratio. Eventually you're gonna feel where that is and you're gonna get that balance. But it's not a bad pointer either. Draw the belly button into the spine, yes. Press through the hands, yes. The thing that I like that she said, gaze towards the wall. One thing that people tend to do is look forward because in a lot of our arm balances, you have to look forward to offset your balance when you're in crow pose or anything like that. So when we're in handstand, we think that we need to look forward and that's gonna throw off your balance. So looking down at your hands or even letting your head fall to look at the wall behind you is a great option. And then it looks like she's gonna kick up to the wall, which I'll talk about later because I think there's a few of these videos in here because a lot of things. And then she just goes right into pressing up into a handstand, which seems like a great alternative, but the reality is, is that a lot of us are probably going to be at the wall for quite some time. I just got some time on my handstand a couple of days ago, so it takes a lot of time. Don't feel like you have to do all of this and in the same day wearing the same outfit, you're gonna be able to land that handstand. It's possible. And if you wanna play around until you get it, go for it. But don't feel bad if you can't. She's got a lot of control. She looks really good. And if you notice here, you can see her muscles contracting and she's kind of shaking. Don't feel like if you're doing that, that you're doing something wrong because you're not. Okay, so that's that one. This one is from 
Kerry Podelnik, Podelnik, I don't know how to say, I'm not good with putting emphasis on the right syllables or emphasis on the right syllables for that matter. So we're in some headstands now here. I'm going to point this out right here. Um, in yoga, which if you're using a hashtag for yoga or calling this a yoga fail, I'm going to analyze this from a yoga standpoint. I think some handstands, it is more common to bring your arms out almost like a wide push up and that's fine if that's the form, if you're a gymnast or something, I'm not familiar with that, so I don't really know. But from a yoga standpoint, if you're in that tripod, I would prefer instead of those elbows being wide, like so, like imagine this is your floor planting your hands, pulling those elbows in, creating those chaturanga arms, shoulder over the wrist, and then bring your head forward to rest the crown of your head down. That's going to give you much more stability and it's gonna create a nice shelf to put your knees on to get that hang time. Um, I think I just messed up my makeup, hold on. No, no, we're fine. Um, okay, let's, let's just watch that again. I, I am fine with people wanting to have fun. I'm fine if you're hanging out on the beach and you're enjoying yourself and you want to have fun. But, and it is possible to do a headstand completely on your head with your arms up, but that takes years and years and years of experience. And I'm not saying that they're not experienced or advanced or whatever, but watching you fall on your neck like that, that is so, 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 so dangerous. And again, I'm not shaming anybody or saying that there's anything wrong with playing around, but when you are putting the weight of your body on your neck, you need to be careful. You need to just make sure that could cause a herniated disc and worse than that, you could really do some nerve damage and that could be very dangerous and permanent. Um, moving on. So this is from Mario Adrian. And he, this is his daily yoga routine. So right here, he's in Utita Asta Paragustasana or extended hand to foot pose. And I admire that he's doing it. He's clearly just having fun and that's fine. If you wanted to know what to do in order to improve upon these poses. If you notice, he's a little hunched over here. When he's reaching for his foot, he's got his leg completely extended, which I really can't even do. I prefer to have a little bit of a bend to my knee, but he's kind of hunched over, creating that tension in the low back. It's better to have your back tall and your knee bent in your utita asta than to hunch forward because you can pull your low back. We've got a one-legged chair pose, looks good. He's in a warrior three, which isn't bad. Um, he's externally rotating his top hip a little bit, which I'm being picky here, but um, ideally in warrior three, you want both of your hip bones to shine towards your mat and you wanna keep the hips squared off rather than opening them because then you're getting into kind of a half moon pose. The headstand. stand. Again, see we have those elbows out. If you bring your elbows in and tuck them in towards the ribs, you're going to feel way more stable, I promise you. And um, a lot of people when they first start doing headstands and handstands and everything, they tend to just fling. There's no control. And once you get, I mean, he clearly has plenty of um, muscle here that he could engage to his benefit. It's just a matter of knowing when and how to use it and it just takes practice. But good for him and he's doing, <laughs> he's doing great. Anything else? That's it for him. He's cute. I like that. Okay. The next one is another how to practice yoga. She's trying pro pose and she just can't seem to do it. Her knees keep sliding down her elbows. Um, so they're saying to practice your boat pose first, which is going to help with your core. Um, doing some bicycle crunches is gonna help strengthen the core. And yes, laying on your back like that to bring your knees up into your arms is also going to help work your core and just kind of get you to feel where you need to be. 
Then we're practicing with blocks, lifting the feet. Another good option to strengthen the hip flexors. Here's the thing, when people stand on a block to practice crow pose, I don't necessarily always like teaching a beginner that way, just because when you stand up on that block, it kind of tilts you forward a lot, and I feel like you almost feel like you're falling more than when you just start by practicing it, but it is completely up to you and it's just whatever you prefer. For me personally, I feel like I'm going to topple over when I use a block. Another option is to bring your forehead or the crown of your head down to that block to lift up, which is a good option. The only thing with that is, is it teaches you to rest your head and look down. And with crow pose, that's one where you do want to look slightly forward to offset your balance. You don't want to look straight down. So just keep that in mind. And then when you're ready, you have a beautiful crow pose. Yes, I think this is a great um, tutorial to kind of get you into that crow pose. Um, good. Nothing bad to say. Nothing bad to say anyway, but you know. This is from Bob Reese. And the caption says, I straight up dropped my wife. So, they look like gymnasts. They look, they're playing in the sun. It's fun. Bang. <laughs> she just, yeah, it, it happens. Whenever you're playing around, it happens. That was cute. Um, if my husband ever dropped me, I'd be pissed. I'm just kidding. We have done like fun little like, couple yoga things before when we were bored and it's, it's hilarious if you do that with, especially if your spouse doesn't practice yoga, it's so funny to do with them. Just give it a try. You'll thank me later. This is from LEC Lifestyle or EYC Lifestyle. Okay, so here's the thing. She is using a weight bench on a slippery floor to get her feet up to practice a handstand to kick up to the wall. My suggestion would just be to use the wall to kick up and not, and this is where I said I would talk about this later. A lot of people like to kick up to the wall like she's about to do because they like to have that wall behind them so that they can rest their feet on it. I prefer to do the opposite, which is what we saw in that first video after a while she switched directions. I don't like kicking up to the wall because it kind of gives you this false sense of security and it is scarier to practice that way rather than to switch it and kick up off of the wall to kind of get that hang time. If you need to fall back, you can still fall back onto the wall. Why don't I just show you? And again, I don't really measure where my feet need to go. I just plant my hands down, finding shoulder width apart, and I just bring my feet up to the wall. I don't necessarily do that L shape either. I bring my hips over my shoulders and then I let one leg rest. And see, you can see I'm hovering here. I don't have the grace to come out of it quite yet, so we'll cut that out. But to me, that is so much better to learn to come off of that and not have that security blanket so that when you're ready to get off of the wall and just kick up, you're gonna be in a better position. And that weight, weight bench isn't even high enough for her. She's doing more work and she's having a harder time. And it's also slippery on the floor, which could be dangerous. I know she's got someone there spotting her, which is good. That's what you want until you feel ready. What's the next one? This is Sierra Wolonski 2. And it says, I ran into these Persian guys. And they asked me to do a handstand. Dang. That's impressive. I And that's more gymnast right there. Um, of course, there was a hashtag of yoga in there. And I am impressed by that. So I'm glad that it was in my list. But um, that's not necessarily, I mean, partner yoga, acro yoga, similar to being a gymnast. So, I mean, 10 out of 10, I'll probably never be able to do that. Uh, what do we have here? This is, I can't see her handle. It's 
said when you try to be cool at yoga. What is her handle? I can't see it. B dot rookie with two E's and two O's. And she's, she's trying to take a, oh, a side plank with a bind. So it can be really hard to get your foot around your back and into grabbing your opposite foot. And she tried to take a side plank while reaching around her low back for her opposite foot that was up in her hip crease, as you can see. Um, if you don't, if you're having a hard time reaching for that foot, one of the reasons being could be that your shoulders are tight. So you wanna think about doing some shoulder exercises in order to open up that area. And that's gonna be a little bit easier for you. This is from Jose Manu. And this says, sheer shasana fail of the year. Another headstand. So this is a supported headstand. He has his hands behind his head, bringing his, coming onto his forearms, which is not my favorite way of doing a headstand. I much prefer to have a tripod where your hands are in, under and you've got your shoulder over your elbow, but some people like this way a lot better. You've got good control. So, oh my gosh. Um, the glass door freaks me out. Uh, I would not practice yoga in front of a, anything with glass on it. I know that it would take a lot of force to break, but you know, I would just be careful. Um, he was doing great until he kicked his leg up. Watch what happens here. He's got a lot of control. He's engaging his abdominals. He kicks his right leg and immediately loses his balance because he doesn't kick it up slowly. He kind of kicks it out, kind of flailing, and that immediately throws you off of balance and it knocks him over. Oh my gosh, that door. <laughs> but he's laughing, he's okay, it's fine. I would just suggest, he kind of kicked straight out too. Try to engage your core to lift your feet straight up. That's gonna help avoid that issue. Now here are some good, this is again, how to practice yoga. Hmm. Um, these are some good shoulder stretches at the wall that you could do if you're trying to work on your binds and you have a bit of tightness in the chest and in the shoulders. These are some great options. Um, she's very flexible. Don't feel like you have to look like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That nice supported child's pose, that feels really good. Um, and the supported puppy pose feels really good too. Her puppy pose is super flexible. She can get her chest all the way down. Threading the needle, a good one with a half bind. And cow face arms. This is a great stretch, which a lot of us already do, um, like a half cow face for the arms when we do this stretch here. If you wanna get a little bit more, you can reach that hand underneath and interlace the fingers here. And that's just going to really open that top shoulder. You want to use your head to kind of lift that elbow back so that it doesn't push you forward, but that's going to really help to open the shoulders and the chest. A couple more. I hope my battery doesn't die. I have two more. Uh, this is from Dobby Baby or Bobby. Okay, so we're doing Nadi Shodana, which um, if you've watched my video where I did Nadi Shodana, I mess it up every single time. And she has a really great way of explaining it. Love her whole vibe here. She just looks really chill. You block the right nostril, you inhale. You block the left one, you exhale. Then you inhale, block it off, exhale, inhale, block, exhale, inhale. I always try to do too much. I'm always doing like three, one inhale, one exhale, one inhale one exhale, one inhale, and it's just, I always get confused. It's a lot simpler than I try to make it. Um, so I'm glad that she did that because it was honestly her TikTok that helped me understand that I was making it way too complicated. Um, Nadi Shodana is a great way to clear the nostrils if you have allergies or anything. Um, it's also good for the digestive system. So when I did the video for Sarah Perkins, I threw it in there. One more, this is from Jessica, what? 
And Jessica Wood says, that escalated quickly. We're doing a handstand on the water. There are puppies. It's fun. I have a feeling. Yeah. I hope that camera wasn't expensive or it was waterproof. Um, and this just kind of goes to show when we try to make everything Instagram worthy or TikTok worthy, how sometimes it really takes away from our practice. You could have been enjoying a super amazing practice on the beach and like just really getting into it and a wave could have come and hit you and it would have been funny. And now you maybe possibly broke your phone or your camera. And um, not to say that I don't do the exact same thing, we all do. But sometimes when I see things like that, it makes me think, man, sometimes I should really do my yoga practice without worrying about if anybody can see it. Um, and again, not to say that the next time I go to the beach, I'm not gonna be doing the exact same thing. I just feel really bad that she um, maybe possibly broke her camera. It could be waterproof and it could all be fun, but um, I hope it was because that would really, really suck. Uh, so that is all I have for today, reacting to yoga TikToks and yoga TikTok fails. I hope you liked it. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I appreciate all of you and everything that you guys do. Thank you so much for being here and I hope you live happy, live free, live well.